Today, we're going to learn how to automate incubators to optimize the egg hatching process. Specifically, we're going to learn the easiest and most effective way I have found that can automate several incubators at once for maximum production. But first, there are a few things we need to research in order to build automated incubators. We are definitely going to need everything up to animal control in the food section research to unlock the incubators themselves. To do this, we'll require the supercomputer for advanced research, which can be found under colony development. We will also need everything up to and including advanced automation here. These are the bare minimum to complete this build, however I do suggest a few other technologies that will make the process easier and more efficient. Namely power regulation in the power section to access the jumbo battery and internal combustion also in the power section or the call generator if your playthrough has already completed or isn't concerned with the super sustainability achievement. Another building you will likely need is the rock crusher in order to produce the refined metal needed for building incubators and all the automation components. This can be obtained by unlocking brute force refinement in the solid section. Now that we know what research is necessary to get started building, let's cover a few basics about incubation. The key advantage the incubator provides is the lullaby buff. When an incubator is powered and is active, it creates an errand that allows a duplicate with the critter ranching skill to hug the incubator. When this action is completed, the egg inside gains the lullaby buff, which increases incubation speed by 400%. That's five times faster than an egg's base incubation rate. For example, a hatch egg naturally takes 20 cycles to hatch, whereas the same egg requires four cycles when consistently lullabied in an incubator. And therein lies the rub. How do we make sure an egg is consistently lullabied every cycle until it hatches without constantly powering the incubator? More importantly, how can we do this for multiple eggs at the same time? Well, it just so happens I have an answer, and I'm guessing that's why you're here. And the answer is... Automation. Automation. Yeah, <laughs> Actually, it's math and automation, but don't fret. There are only two numbers we need to remember. The numbers we need to know are related to how long the lullaby buff lasts and the amount of time that is sufficient for an egg to actually be lullabied. This means that each incubator will need to be powered and activated long enough to be lullabied and then be deactivated for one whole cycle until the buff is needed again. It is important to note that an egg cannot be lullabied if it currently has the buff or the incubator it is in is deactivated. In order not to miss a chance to lullaby an egg each and every cycle as it becomes able, the timing is critical. To accomplish this, we will use a timer sensor. Timer sensor values are measured in seconds. In oxygen not included, there are 600 in-game seconds in each cycle. This is our first number, and it will be our red signal time for the timer sensor. The second number is the reasonable amount of time for the lullaby to be completed, which is 75 seconds. Now this isn't a hard and fast value like the number of seconds in a cycle, but there is a reason I recommend this value. Value. And here's why. 75 divides nicely into 600 eight times, meaning that we can have eight incubators activating for 75 seconds, one after another, every full cycle. I like to call this setup an incubator array. Now for those of you math wizards out there, you might have noticed that if an incubator is active for 75 seconds and then deactive for 600 seconds, that means the total time or period is 675 seconds. This means we can actually have nine incubators operating in sequence. We just need to make sure to always have a critter rancher on duty, which means you will need at least two to keep up with round the clock incubators. Okay, so we have our numbers for the timer sensor. This is enough to set up a single incubator. To do so, simply build the incubator, connect it to a power source and hook up a timer sensor set to 75 seconds green signal and 600 seconds red signal. But we're not stopping there in this tutorial. No, we're going to create an incubator array. Let's start by building nine incubators side by side in a row and hook them up to a power source. Next, let's build a timer sensor above and to the left of the leftmost incubator and set it to 75 seconds green signal and 600 seconds red signal. Now we're going to place a filter gate directly below it like this and repeat this placement stopping at the next to last incubator in the line. Now let's place a buffer gate directly below and one tile to the right of each filter gate. The last buffer gate should overlap the final incubator incubator by one tile. Let's set all the gates to 75 seconds and build automation wire connecting all the components like so. Note the repeating pattern here. Okay, so now we have our basic array. Next, let's take a look at how it operates. When our timer sensor here enters its green signal period, it will output a green signal for 75 seconds, activating the first incubator and starting the countdown in the first filter gate. At the end of the green signal from the timer, the filter gate will activate sending a green signal to the first buffer gate. The buffer gate will then send a green signal to the next incubator and the second filter gate, starting another 75 second countdown. This will repeat down the line of gates and incubators until it reaches the end of our array. And since we built nine segments in the array, the timer sensor will output put another green signal just as the last incubator turns off. 
And here are the overlays. And there you go. Just kidding. <laughs> We're still not done. No, no. We're going to supercharge this puppy by creating an even bigger array. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you an 18 incubator array that I have dubbed the Octadecabator, or ODB for short. <laughs> this bad boy is fully automated, lullabies aside, and even includes its very own evolution chamber. This design is based on our nine incubator array. However, each segment activates two incubators. Chutes, loaders, and sweepers have been carefully placed to automate egg replacement and shell removal. Note that the critter sensors I added here turn off the sweeper for each room if it detects more than nine eggs. And if more than nine eggs find their way into the room somehow, the priority of both the incubators and loaders have been set in a way that will ensure any extras find their way back to the evolution chamber. I have also added additional loaders to sort and ship items that may end up in the evolution chamber, such as the eggshells. Once this is built, all it needs is an egg input to the evolution chamber and a connection to power. And here are the overlays. So now that you're an incubation expert, you're going to need to build a ranch to fill it. This video will show you one of the best automated ranches if you're ranching hatches. Still here? Tell me what you think. How will you use this array? What would you change or add? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to activate that like button. Stay awesome friends, and until next time, later.